I'm going to share my screen with you to uh, start lecture. So uh, in the last week, we have introduced uh, some um, uh, information about the um, OK, this is where we're going to start. We have introduced the information about the uh, the old mark procedures for the analysis of the stress and strain uh, with respect to the flex swap humans. And uh, this one uh, in this at uh, this uh, step, we focus on the two layer system and uh, this procedure will help us to convert a uh, typical two layer pavement system into a uh, new uh, homogeneous uh, pavement structure where they will convert the uh, upper layer um, to an equivalent um, layer, equivalent layer with the uh, same uh, slab stiffness or the same elastic modulus to the subgrade layer. And uh, uh, the procedure will give an equation for us to find out the uh, equivalent thickness with the, with the uh, modulus or elasticity of the subgrade layer. And uh, here's the equation for you to find out the uh, equivalent uh, thickness and H equal to H times E1 divided by E3 ES uh, to the power of one third. And this is the uh, the first equation is the uh, theoretical formula to find out the uh, thickness. Uh, this is the uh, one we're going to use in this class. Uh, but in reality, uh, based on the uh, data we observed in the uh, field experiment, we usually find that the uh, the, the equivalent thickness should be uh, should be applied. We need to apply in the uh, reduction, which will be around 90% uh, of the theoretical value. So that's the um, that's the way for us to find out the equivalent uh, thickness for the uh, old mark procedure. And the uh, with the uh, with the equivalent thickness with the old mark procedure, we can then apply the uh, conventional Boosting to solution to calculate the deflections at the uh, interface of the sub of the surface layer and the uh, subgrade layer, uh, which would be the uh, uh, deflection at point A. Uh, here we will consider point A is uh, just the end of the center line of the contact area. Uh, at first, if the load is a uh, point load, um, or if the load is a uh, Evenly distributed. Sorry, the, if the load is evenly distributed in this uh, in the area within the radius of circular area with the radius of a, then we can find out the um, the stress applied at the point the deflection at the point a. Uh, so here w is the deflection. At the point a with this equation. And this one is related to the uh, contact pressure Q, the radius of the contact area, the uh, modulus of elasticity for the subgrade. So this is the subgrade. And the uh, equivalent thickness, HE. So this is the uh, this is the uh, key point for us to introduce the uh, automark procedure. And of course, you can extend this one for the other for the other locations. Here, this equation is only applied for the uh, for the point in the center line of the uh, contact area. But it can also be extended to the other locations with certain distance from the point to the center line. So that's the first case for the distributed load. But if we consider an, a different situation where the load is applied to a point, then we can also utilize the Boussinac solution to calculate the deflection at any location in the pavement structure. And uh, this equation shows the uh, deflection at the um, deflection at any point with the uh, distance to the center line of R. So R is the uh, letter R is the distance to the center line. To center line. 
and um, you can then utilize this equation to calculate the uh, deflection at the specific points. And in this equation, you have another new variable r, which will be related to the uh, distance to the center line and also the equivalent thickness of the uh, surface layer. And uh, uh, of course, you can find out the this deflection applied upon A if R equal to zero. Then you can, you can find out the deflection at point A uh, with respect to the point load. So those would be two different equations for us to calculate deflection at one specific point in the pyramid structure in the two layer pyramid structure with the automatic uh, approach. And um, another thing we need to think about is the, uh, the deflection at the surface of the pyramid structure. So uh, here B is the, uh, it's, the uh, it's on the surface and it's just in the center of the contact area. And uh, uh, in general, generally, the uh, if we don't consider the uh, the equations of the uh, def deflection, obviously that dis displacement at the pavement surface, we can just intuitively think about that the displacement or the deflection at point B is just the deflection at point A, and the potential deflection occurred at the pavement layer, which would be the uh, deflection at the pyramid structure with the uh, thickness of edge. And uh, this small, this small deflection, um, delta, delta W can be determined by this equation. And of course it's related to the, uh, to the elastic modulus, the Poisson's ratio and the thickness of the, of this surface layer. And, uh, um, also, it's related to the uh, equivalent thickness of the pavement structure. But in in reality, usually this kind of uh, this kind of deflection from the pavement structure is much smaller than the deflection of the subgrade. The reason is like the uh, the stiffness. Usually, the stiffness or the elastic modulus of the pavement structure is much larger than the uh, subgrade layer. So you're gonna observe the smaller deflections, much smaller deflections for the permanent structure. And in that sense, we can uh, even ignore the uh, the contribution of the deflection or displacement from the permanent structure when you calculate the uh, deflection at the surface of the permanent structure. So what we can get that for this uh, deflection at the surface is usually can be considered the same to the deflection at the interface of the pavement structure and the subgrade, which would be the uh, deflection at, at the same level of point A. And uh, um, we can also apply the Boosting Next solution to calculate the uh, stress, which would be the, uh, the vertical stress. Here, uh, sigma z is the vertical stress. And uh, um, with the boosting next solution, if we have the point load, you can apply this equation directly to calculate the uh, stress at a point uh, at the uh, at one specific point is the especially the point A. And the uh, the in this equation, we also need to use the um, the equivalent equivalent uh, thickness of the permanent structure HE. And this is from the boosting net solution. Uh, if you have the distributed load, then you can apply the new mark solution to calculate the uh, stress at the point A, which can be, uh, is a little bit complicated, but uh, the, uh, you can calculate the uh, vertical stress at the uh, point A as in a function of the radius of contact area the uh, equivalent thickness of the pavement structure and also the uh, distributed uh, contact, distributed load, which will be the contact pressure. Um, so that's the uh, two different ways for you to calculate the uh, stress, vertical stress uh, with the point load and distributed load. 
And uh, uh, this would be in the summary about the stress and the strain, uh, stress and deflection applied at point A. So for the uh, from the uh, on the left, you can find out the uh, the equations of the deflection at point A, as what we showed previously, is related to the uh, elastic modulus of the subgrade, the equivalent uh, thickness of the pavement structure, the radius of the contact area, and also the co uh, contact pressure. And also, you can get the uh, <coughs> the uh, vertical stress at point A, which which is uh, actually a uh, comes from the uh, new mark, uh, the uh, the Boosting net solution, and uh, also we have to apply the uh, the formula to calculate the equivalent uh, pavement thickness HE. And uh, um, we have to. This would be the uh, the information we have to use for the uh, uh, automark uh, procedure to calculate the stress and strain for the flexible pavement. And uh, we actually apply this procedure to simplify the analysis of the stress and strain for multi-layer system. And we hope that this one can, this kind of parameters can, uh, or the calculation can represent the real material properties. Uh, but uh, the fact is like this, the, uh, they cannot represent the actual properties. So uh, even in the future, we do some mechanical analysis uh, we cannot totally rely on that for the pavement design. We still need to have some um, uh, empirical models or some statistical models to complete the design. And another thing, like uh, uh, when you do this uh, estimation, you you using these different methods: the Boussinet solution, the uh, Burmester solution, and the Olmec uh, procedures. You have to clearly specify what kind of uh, assumptions you have to make before you really deploy the uh, those equations. Otherwise, the uh, the uh, public or the uh, the constructors cannot understand what what the uh, what kind of conditions, what kind of situations they can uh, apply this design. And uh, uh, we also have the uh, with the with the uh, old mark procedure, we can also uh, estimate the strain. Uh, usually, we can find out the radial strain would be uh, proportional to the uh, to the deflection at the surface of the road, as well as the uh, thickness of the uh, of the uh, equivalent uh, equivalent thickness of the pavement structure. And uh, for the radial stress. Is proportional to E1 times the uh, the uh, strain of the pavement of the pavement structure, and for the vertical strain, it's proportional to sigma z divided by uh, Es, which would be the uh, elastic modulus of the subgrade layer. And of course, we have the uh, formula to calculate the uh, equivalent thickness. And uh, if we do the summary about all the previous analysis, we can see that uh, for the flexible pavement, if we increase the thickness of the uh, upper layer, the top layer, or if you decrease the ratio of E1 uh, divided by E2, then the, uh, or if we increase the ratio of E1 and E2, then you're gonna reduce the, uh, the radiant strain at the bottom of the pavement. So this indicates that we are, by increasing the uh, thickness, we can prevent the uh, deformation or deflection of the subgrade layer. Or if we increase the thickness, uh, the, the modulus of elasticity for the upper layer, we can also uh, prevent the large strain at the bottom layer. Uh, in that sense, we can reduce the pavement stress. So either way can help you to make the improve the performance of the pavement structure. Um, also, we observe that by increasing the uh, thickness of the pavement structure and the ratio of U1 and U2, we are able to decrease the vertical stress at the top of the subgrade. And uh, uh, we can also observe the reduced shear stress in the pavement 
and uh, uh, in addition for the uh, for the properties of the modulus elasticity, if we have the larger values of E1, then we're going to observe smaller shear stress in the pavements. So in general, uh, if you want to improve the performance of the uh, pavements with, res with respect to the deflections, the vertical stress and shear stress, you should increase the uh, thickness of the pavement structure or increase the uh, modulus of elasticity for the payment structure. But uh, unfortunately, both of them will result in the higher uh, budget of the, the construction, because usually uh, higher thickness indicates that you need more materials, while the uh, larger E1 usually represents uh, more expensive materials you have to use. So um, we need to find out the trade-off between the performance and also the budget. And uh, uh, with that, we can make an, uh, a quick summary about everything we learned. Uh, we have in this uh, in this chapter, we introduced the boosting net solution to calculate the uh, stress and strain for the uh, for any point in the homogeneous uh, ground. And this only applies for the one layer uh, payment structure. This is always a one layer approximation from the old mark approach. And the second one is called the uh, Burmist theory. And this one applies for the two layer, uh, uh, apply for the payment of its two layer approximation. And uh, the equations and the uh, analysis are all based on the elasticity theory. And the last one is the Oldmark approach. So that will be, this will be in, uh, a special case. They will convert in the two layer system into an equivalent single layer system. And with that, we're going to use the uh, boosting net solution to find out the deflection and the stress at any locations in the payment structure. And uh, the last one, which would be the more general solution, we haven't introduced yet, but we're going to introduce uh, them in the, uh, in the software, which is the uh, multi-layer elasticity theory. Uh, the uh, Burmese theory and automatic approach will, will be one will be two special case from the multi-layer elasticity uh, theory. Uh, this one can apply to a uh, general situation with uh, more than two layers of the payment structure. Uh, again, I will go through them uh, with more details in the uh, in the future in the lectures this week. Uh, for the first for the uh, for the single layer system with the homogeneous uh, material properties, we can apply this uh, two equations to find out the stress. This is the vertical stress and the uh, deflection. Uh, with the point load. And also we can have the formula. If we have the distributed load, you can you will have the uh, different formulas calculated the vertical stress and deflection. Uh, so that's for the uh, single layer system. For the two-layer system, we can apply the Burmester theory, and uh, in this uh, in this theory, we assume that the uh, the ratio of the vertical stress and the and the applied load or the contact pressure is in the function of three variables: the ratio of Z and A, which will be the uh, thickness of, or depth of the point with respect to the contact radius, the ratio of E1 and E2, and the ratio of H1 and A. And we can also find out the deflection at the center line of the contact area. And uh, uh, this deflect deflection is determined by the, uh, uh, strain, by the strain factor F2, and this which is in the function of the ratio E1 and E2 and H1 and A. So that's for the uh, Burmester theory. You need to know, you need to be familiar about the uh, graphs that we I showed in the previous lecture to find out the uh, or to calculate the value of vertical stress and uh, deflection. And uh, for the last approach, which is the old mark approach, they're going to transform the two layer system to an equivalent single layer system and apply the um, boosting as the solution to find out deflection and stress. So they have uh, one of the key formula is uh, the uh, how to calculate the uh, equivalent uh, thickness 
and uh, the H is actually equal to H, H, the original thickness times the E1 divided by ES, ES to the power of one third. Or you can, uh, for some realistic design, you're going to use uh, uh, time with the uh, HE will be 0.9 times the, uh, the equation. And you can calculate the uh, deflection at the surface, which would be the uh, deflection of the interface plus the deflection of the pavement structure. And you have the, uh, the formula to calculate the uh, deflection at an interface uh, along the center line of the contact area. You also have the formula to calculate the, the deflection generated by the uh, pavement structure. So that will be in a quick summary about all the three approaches we uh, introduced and we actually will use, we can apply either one of them, any one of them to calculate the stress and strain for the flexible pavement. And here I will just go through several examples to see how we're gonna use this uh, method to calculate the stress and strain or some parameters with respect to the pavement design um, under the uh, flexible pavement. In the first problem, we will consider an, uh, a pavement structure with a circular load, and the radius is 152 millimeters, and the contact pressure is uniform with the uh, 550 kilopascal, and this is a two-layer system. Uh, the subgrid has an elastic modulus of 35 megapascal, and it can support the maximum vertical stress of of 55 kilopascal. Uh, if we have the uh, as how to mix the asphalt, the uh, applied for the uh, asphalt layer, and it has the uh, elastic modulus of 3.5 gigapascal, we want to calculate what's the required thickness, what's the required thickness of the of the full depth of pavement. Uh, this one is related to what we need to do for the pavement design. So in this problem, first we are provided with the, uh, we need to list all the information that we are provided. For the two layer system, uh, this is the, the hot mix asphalt layer, and also we have the subgrade. Uh, for the uh, hot mix asphalt, we have E1. For the uh, subgrade, we have E2. We want to find out the, uh, what's the thickness of the, uh, of the top layer, the the uh, the asphalt layer, and uh, in the problem we are provided with the uh, value of E1 equal to 3.5 gigapascal. We have E2 equal to uh, 35 megapascal, and also we know the value of the uh, contact pressure Q is a uh, 550 kilopascal and the uh, contact area our uh, contact radius is 152 millimeter in addition we know the maximum vertical stress the maximum vertical stress is a uh, um 50 55 55 kilopascal. And we want to find out what's the value of what's the value of the thickness, what's the uh, minimum value of the thickness. So to do that, we should recall the uh, Boise Next solution, uh, the, the, uh, the Burmester, the Burmester theory. So first, uh, for the Burmester theory, we know that sigma c divided by q is a function of three variables, z divided by a, uh, e1 divided by e2, and h1 divided by a. Here, h1 is just the thickness of the asphalt layer. Um, with that, we can then go to check all the information first. So first for the... Uh, for E1 divided by E2, uh, we know that for the um, asphalt layer, E1 is a 33.5 gigapascal, 
and for the E2 is 35 megapascal. So this will give you the value as 100. And the next thing you need to do is to find out the uh, find out the uh, the thickness um, the uh, the ratio the maximum ratio of the vertical stress versus the uh, versus the uh, the applied or the contact pressure. So this is the maximum value. With that, you can find out the minimum uh, thickness of the pavement. Uh, I guess this is AOH. So the uh, for the sigma C, that will be uh, um, 55. And Q is uh, 550. So which will give you the value as 0.1. And uh, with that, we can then go to the uh, figure Go to the figure here to calculate to find out what's the value of what's the what's the uh, value with respect to sigma with respect to sigma c over q equal to 0 0.1 and uh, elastic the ratio of the uh, elastic modulus of 100. So for the uh, ratio of the elastic modulus of 100, we have to choose the uh, the bottom line and uh, for the value of 0 0.1 sigma z over q point or 0 0.1 you get the uh with these two you get the uh a divided by h1 equal to 1.15 so this is the 1.15 and then in this in this problem you get a a divided by h1 in this case that will be h equal to 1.15 and give you h1 equal to uh, i'll just use h to represent h1 it's a uh, a a is 152 divided by 1.15 and that will give you the uh thickness of the asphalt layer as 132 millimeters this is actually the minimum value you need you have to take. So any value, any thickness higher than that one can support the requirement of this example. So that's the first question. And the second question is like if we consider an, uh, a thin surface treatment applied to the granule base with an elastic modulus of uh, 175 megapascal, which means that we change the uh, we change the value of E1 to from 3.5 from 3.5 gigapascal to 175 megapascal, and with that we're gonna try to find out what's the uh, what's the thickness of the base course uh, applied to minimize the radius to minimize uh, to maintain make sure that the uh, vertical stress does not exceed to um, does not exceed to uh, 50, 55 uh, kilopascal. So uh, for this, for the second situation, we get a, a E1 divided by E2, that is 175 divided by 35, which will give you the result as five. And still we have sigma C over Q equal to 0.1. So in this specific case, we're going to need to choose this third line in this graph. Also, the uh, value of sigma c over q is still 0.1. So with that, you can find out the value of going to find the value of a over h1 is the 0.4. So uh, here again, h1 is just the h. So we have H equal to 152 divided by 0.4, which will give you the thickness of the uh, base course as 381 millimeters. And with this, with this example, you can clearly see that uh, if this the elastic modulus of the the top layer is smaller, then in order to maintain the similar performance, you must increase the thickness of the top layer. 
so that's the uh, the first example. And then we go, go to check another one with more complicated situation. So here we consider a subgrade. Uh, consider an, uh, a, a plate is uh, directly applied to a subgrade with the uh, modulus of elasticity of ES. And we know the uh, diameters of this plate is uh, 30 inches, which means that the radius of the uh, the radius of the plate is just 15 inches. And uh, uh, if we apply the load of 10 PSI to the plate, then the uh, deflection we observe is a 0.1 inch. And uh, we, are, we will then consider another situation, assuming that we are uh, we apply the base layer on top of the uh, subgrade sub subgrade layer. And the uh, modulus or elasticity of the base layer is E1, and the uh, thickness of the layer is uh, six inches. Uh, we also know that if the uh, load applied to the uh, to the base layer is uh, 20 psi, we're going to observe 0.1 inch um, deflection at the subgrade. So with that, we want to uh, estimate what's the value of ES and what's the value of E1. So this is a, a little bit of more complicated and uh, needs us to combine all the equations we learned previously about the calculation of the uh, stress and the strain and also the deflection. And now uh, you also need to think about what kind of method you have to choose. Uh, actually, in this in this example, we're gonna use, we're gonna choose the uh, old mark approach to solve the uh, the thickness of the uh, to find out the uh, the equivalent thickness and use that information to find out the value of ES and E1. Uh, here, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. First of all, we uh, we have the for the for the figure on the left. This is an uh, this is in a homogeneous ground. The plate is just directly applied to the subgrade. And uh, we know the radius is 15 inches, the load is 10 psi, and the deflection is uh, um, 0.1 inch. So we can apply the Bosinac solution with uh, W equal to uh, 3 over 2 times Q times A divided by ES. And uh, uh, the four the four equation it's a uh, a it's divided by a square plus z square uh, square root. But we know that we know that for this situation, uh, for this example, we have uh, the thickness as zero, which is just uh, in the surface of the pavement or the subgrade. So uh, this part can be uh, ignored, this will just be one, so we can just remove it from the calculation. Uh, what we get is uh, uh, three half of Q times A times ES. We know the value of, we know the value of Q, we know the value of A, and uh, um, we, all, we want to find out the, uh, the information of ES and also the deflection. So uh, in this problem, W is a 0.1 inch. So we have 0.1 equal to 3 half times Q is a, a 10 PSI times A is a 15 inch divided by ES. ES is the only variable that we don't know in this equation. So we get the value of ES equal to um, 2250 psi so this is the uh, the first part for us to find out the value of the uh, elastic modulus for the subgrade and then uh, we need to move to the second pro second part we know the uh, there's a two layer we add in the base course on top of the subgrade and then we apply the load to the plate, the same plate with the radius of 15 inches, 
and uh, we also observe the 0.1 inch deflection um, at the load at the uh, interface of the subgrade and the base layers uh, with the load with the contact pressure of 20 psi and the thickness of six inches. So we have then to use this information to uh, to calculate what uh, what's the value of E1 for the base case. So to do that, we will need to recall the uh, equation that we uh, showed previously about the from the old mark approach. So with that, we have W equal to three half times Q times A divided by ES times A divided by A square plus HE square square root. So uh, in this equation, we know the value of omega is still 0.1 inch. And uh, the load for now is uh, 20 psi. And the radius is a uh, um, 15 inches and ES is uh, we have already calculated it as 2250 uh, times A is a uh, 15 divided by 15 uh, plus uh, 15 square plus HE square 15 square plus HE square square root and uh, with that, you can solve this equation to get the value of HE. So in this case, the HE is uh, 45 inches. And uh, we can then use the uh, old mark approach to find our relationship between HE and the uh, original um, thickness of the base course. So it's uh, E. E1 divided by ES one third to the power one third. And this will give, we know the value of HE is 45, H1 is a six inches, and the ES is a 25, uh, 2250 PSI. So with that, we can then get the uh, value of E1 as uh, 950, Southern the PSI. So this is the uh, the value of the modulus elasticity for the base course in this example. And uh, uh, this this example is uh, quite uh, interesting. It will help you to uh, understand how to use the observed deflection to find out the property, to calculate the property of the uh, materials applied to the subgrade and also the base course. We can also do the other way by giving the uh, properties of the subgrade and the um, base course to calculate the deflection, vertical stress, and so on. So that's the, uh, with that I finished all the topics about the uh, stress and strain analysis of the flexible pavement. Uh, do you have any questions for now about the uh, uh, all different methods? And the different uh, uh, different uh, examples to calculate the stress and strain. Um, the uh, for this for this lecture for this notes, it's uh, it's very important for you to go through all these summaries. The summaries about these three different methods: the boosting net solution, the Burmester theory, and automatic approach. Now to understand how they're gonna use to calculate the stress and deflection, as well as the uh, the uh, how to apply them flexibly to uh, get the uh, information or the material properties from the field observations. Okay, uh, if you don't have any questions, I will probably start uh, making a quick start about the um, a quick start about the. Um, the stress and strain analysis of the rigid pavement. So the, uh, the introduction about this uh, 
with respect to the rigid pigment will be simpler. Also, most of the analysis will be very similar, similar to the uh, flexible pigment. And here I will just uh, go through some uh, major difference between the uh, rigid pigment structure strain analysis um, and the uh, flexible pigment. Uh, this, this difference was majorly caused by the uh, properties of the materials applied for the rigid pigment and the flexible pigment. Basically, for the rigid pigment, they're going to use in some PCC slabs, and the uh, mechanics of the PCC slab and the uh, flexible pigment will be very different. Uh, for the uh, for the rigid pigment, the slab, the thickness of the slab will be much smaller than the uh, thickness of the asphalt layers. And usually for the rigid pigment, they will only place in a uh, very thin slab on top of the uh, sub-base course. Does not have uh, too many layers uh, in the field. And the, uh, the slab will usually have a very high elastic modulus with a very high stiffness so that it can carry, uh, carry uh, a very high portion of the uh, load to the road. And the, uh, of course, as it has a very high uh, modulus of elasticity, it's the uh, the capacity that it can hold, it can carry, will be much higher compared with the uh, asphalt layer with the same thickness. And uh, regarding to the uh, to the mechanics of the uh, PCC slabs, usually the uh, the slab will act as a beam in the field. And we're going to have some uh, in the, uh, if you have already taken the class about the uh, statics or dynamics, you will, you will have some understanding about how the beam is working with, res with respect to the corner load and or the distributed load. Uh, I will not go through the details. Instead, in this class, we just uh, cite some of the uh, results from, uh, from this low level class. And the uh, Similar to the uh, flexible pigment, the rigid pigment will also uh, have will experience the stress from the traffic. And uh, but but the uh, another thing we have to consider is the moisture and temperature impact about the about the volume of the PCC slab. And uh, this is this will also uh, represent a very huge portion of the stress. Uh, for the rigid pigment. So we're going to introduce how we're going to analyze the uh, moisture, moisture and temperature changes to the stress and the strain with respect to the uh, PCC slabs. And uh, um, for the rigid and the flexible pigment, there will be some clear difference. Usually the PCC slab is much strong, stronger and stiffer than the asphalt concrete. And uh, um, the, the surface layer can provide more load resistance, and uh, in that sense, the, the bottom layers uh, does not need to be very strong. You can have you can select some uh, subgrades with a lower um, modulus of elasticity, and uh, uh, even though the uh, in that sense, even though the uh, the the PC slab is expensive, but you don't need to spend the actual budget for the base layer, sub base layer, and so on. Uh, the other thing is about the uh, PC about PC slab is the discontinuity of the slabs. Uh, usually, they will be connected with uh, some uh, reinforcement, uh, but this kind of discontinuity will still be the dominant uh, features. The the gap that will ex will generate the distress for the. Uh, Rigid pigment, and uh, the uh, the other two things which will be very different from between the rigid and the flexible pigment is the temperature and the moisture impact. Uh, the PC slab is more sensitive to the uh, to the temperature and the moisture gradients, and they will cause the curling or the warping effect for the slab, which will have the uh, will generate a very significant. Uh, stress or strain to the pigment structure. Um, so that's the difference between the uh, rigid and the uh, flexible pigment and uh, 
Uh, we also have introduced the major distresses applied to the rigid payment. That could be the corner breaks, uh, that which would be the cracks uh, intersecting the adjacent travels and longitudinal joints at the angle of 45 degree. And uh, also we have introduced, uh, previously have introduced the, uh, the mechanism of the mud pumping, which will be the major, one of the major distress of the rigid payment. And the punch out is another type of the distress, and uh, this the, all of them has been introduced in in our previous tutorial sessions. And uh, the uh, the for the uh, for the stress which will be applied for the rigid pavement could be caused by the wheel load, which would be the traffic. That's the major source. It could also be the uh, cyclic changes in temperature, like the uh, the the daytime temperature and nighttime temperature will be very different, and this kind of uh, uh, cyclic changes will cause the warping, curling, and shrinkage, expansion, and uh, contraction of the PCC slabs, and they will generate different uh, values of the uh, uh, stress and strain. And uh, similarly, the moisture content has uh, some similar effect to the temperature, um, and again, they will have the impact to the stress and strain. And uh, of course, the uh, the volumetric changes in the base and sub base course will also have the impact to the uh, to the uh, stress applied to the rigid pavement. Uh, we will introduce more details about how to analyze all these uh, factors in the next lecture. And uh, for the lecture today, I guess I have already run all the time, so I will I will stop here. And in the next lecture, we're gonna have more introduction about how to analyze, how to estimate the stress and uh, strain, and also the deflection for the uh, rigid pavement. Um, do you have any questions for now? Okay, uh, if you don't have any questions, I will uh, close the meeting today, and thank you very much for your time to attending the uh, class. Uh, I will see you on Wednesday to continue this lecture. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy your day. I'll see you on Wednesday.